So pretty much just shout football film bollocks into that. Right. When? Now. Right, how loud? As loud as you want. How quick? Do it. Football film bollocks! <laughs> football film Hit me with some. Right, okay, let's go deep. Let's go deep. <laughs> let's go outside orbit. Let's go outside space. <laughs> let's go all the way to the moon. This is a simulation. Let's go back to the 60s. Let's go back to the space race. And um, in 1968, when a film called 2001 A Space Odyssey, widely renowned as one of the best films of all time. Best film ever made for me. Um, certainly. On a technical level, it's up there. But yeah, that's the film. 2001 Space Odyssey, directed by Stanley Kubrick, obviously. Yeah. Um, effects that still stand up to today, would you say? Definitely. The planets... The, the only thing that bugs me now is, obviously, being spoilt by Interstellar. Mm. The planets are a bit off. That's and, it. But me, yeah, it's the 60s, you know, they're yeah. not going to be... They're not going to know as well as today especially with all the t- technology brought about by by the moon landings yeah so. exactly so i'm not saying i'll put this out there now i'm not saying nasa the american space program didn't go to the moon in the 1960s the fake six moon landing but what i am saying is the footage we all know <laughs> neil yeah. armstrong buzz aldrin all that cheesy one step for man stuff it's all fake. It's all filmed uh, by Stanley Kubrick. That's the theory. I That's think the conspiracy. Where is it? Right, so, so it you have to bring up evidence. So where like this said, comes from. Right, so let's start, like I said earlier, Barry Lyndon. Right. Cameras from NASA. Yes. Now, a lot of people believe he got cameras free from NASA. That is just for doing purely, the theory. It's a big budget film. It is. Cameras at won't eat up into the budget that much. Google the budget of Barry Lyndon, let's do that. Right. I think that'd be a good place to stand. Yeah, Barry Lyndon budget. So, because it's 1975, isn't it? Yeah. 11 million US dollars in 1975. That's like a big blockbuster today, isn't it? So, you know, I mean, NASA, yeah, I'm not denying that they give him cameras, but, you know, not because oh we've scratched your back so we'll scratch it right I'll scratch yours so let's actually go in to the way 2001 Space Odyssey was made yeah uh, most scenes which are set on planets so when you see the monkeys on earth yeah um, right at the well isn't every scene set on a planet what's that isn't every scene what's, set on a planet what's like, the set in space you know like drill bit tail is set on a planet isn't it no but 2001 <laughs> is mainly in a spaceship okay, yeah. Second. So when you see the Dawn of Man sequence with the apes, yep. so you see the, the sort of set with the rocks, and then behind that is front screen, what we call front screen, front screen projection. projection yeah. So it's a big screen, project a picture onto it. Yep. 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 Um, experts have applied the same thinking to the moon landing footage, and they can actually pick out where the set ends and the front screen projection begins right. okay. with the moon landing footage. <clears throat> so there's plenty of if you look into it there's plenty of videos on YouTube <laughs> of people doing that you can even see experts like Richard C. Hoagland have analysed the stills from the moon landing footage and you can see that it's filmed on what we call scotch light which is like the film mm. texture that we use for the back screen front, sorry front screen protection right. so there's plenty of evidence on that one right okay I'm, I'm not into you can I'm, even see some of the joins in some of the um, okay screens I haven't looked into it as much I've seen pictures of this like a wealth of pictures from the Apollo missions I don't know how they compare obviously the quality of the video 1969 is going to be atrocious for the actual filming video on the moon so well why is it when 2001 is so good it's the same technology is what I'm saying but it's right, fake so, yeah. 2001 is fake because it, it made it to look well, 2001, you couldn't do that bit where they see the monolith and then it, you get this like high frequency. You couldn't have that in the same quality as the moon landings footage because it'd be unwatchable for 20 minutes, that sort of. So you have to make it look at least presentable. So like, if you look at the 
Mars rover footage, that's doesn't that's not ten eighty P like, is it? Exactly. But what would you So <laughs> that footage in two thousand and seventeen or whatever is still shit. Yeah. So, so how come it's so good on two thousand and one? No, when Neil it's Armstrong not, steps shit. onto the moon. It's shit. It's, it's fucking, better than it should be. It's not better than it should be. It's better all. than it should be. I'm gonna Google right. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Footage. And it's honestly. Look. Fuck this shit. Right. You can't tell me that that's good quality. You can clearly see like here what we're looking at is the planet and then behind it the space. This is too good man, this is like GoPro footage. <laughs> this is really, what? The handheld this, cameras on rovers. I mean, yeah and it's only going so far, it's going around the perimeter before it drops off the end of the set. <laughs> before he ends up in MGM Grand Studio. Is that so that's, try? that's kind of a technology argument, is that it's used front screen projection, if you look into it, there's plenty of evidence there for that. Even Ed's not liking this theory. <laughs> He'll grow up to like it. <laughs> I'm not, not going to... Um, so the that's the technology. But the then shiny, after that, right. there's clues left out right, throughout okay. Kubrick's legacy. This is like. where this falls so apart So if me. you kind of build a picture by saying, imagine if you did such a thing, and how much secrecy quiet. would have to keep, what the kind of groups and people would be introduced to and the organisations and the societies <laughs> and all this kind of Illuminati secret groups. If you've directed something for NASA, that's kind of high end towards that kind of right. group of people. So you think about it now, Stanley Kubrick has done a favour for them. He's got his favour back with Barry Lyndon, but obviously still that doesn't mean he can say anything about it. Mm-hmm. But if you had a secret like that inside you, a whole country believing that the... the the moon landing is real no the, you're saying real. that the moon landing is real but the footage is fake yeah but he so by it's seeing not the footage he convinced the whole country that America had been to the moon that's the right. impact that it had yeah um, I get the notion so, that they'd fake the moon landings to stop the space race and bankrupt the Soviet Union yeah oh you wouldn't yeah, exactly so you've got it's the, plausible there's a reason you've got to ask with a conspiracy people theory. just jumped on that plausibility you've got to ask with a conspiracy theory why would it be faked well um, obviously we see it today that propaganda is still huge yeah oh, especially yeah. when it comes to America so it's not unusual for them to say look we've been to the moon before Russia Tom Jones <laughs> <laughs> so like I say he's now in he's got this secret <laughs> they're seating him inside I mean, he comes round in the 80s to directing The Shining obviously the adaptation of the <laughs> Stephen King book one of his most famous books probably um, oh, set oh. in the Overlook Hotel now in the source novel in King's book the number was 217 <laughs> for the, oh, sorry the no. number for a room which yeah, features heavily yeah, in the yeah. film was kind of like a bad place um, so the room 217 is in the book Stanley Kubrick what was it changed is, to and why was when it, it comes to detail he's very pedantic so he's changed the number from 217 to 237 now do not tell me a coin- do not tell me it's a coincidence but the moon from earth is 237,000 miles away because <laughs> that's not a coincidence he wouldn't just right. change the 1 to a 3 for no reason <clears throat> but there's also the argument that the actual hotel where they filmed it had a room 217 so they had to change it because people wouldn't stay in the room no I think they would though uh, you'd get people you'd like, get weirdos going back tr- yeah 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 Little, not weirdos but yeah weirdos yeah weirdos yeah, <laughs> yeah. conspiracy theories. so that's one cl- that's, all, that's just the first clue in The Shining right, right so we've got yeah, this room yeah. which number this is just piggybacking off we've got a room which he's <laughs> changed the number from to a number that represents a distance from the moon to the earth. Yeah. What yeah. else have we got? We've got the sun, Danny Torrance, the uh, son of the lead protagonist. So Stanley. Danny Torrance plays around the big hotel, basically, and one day he's playing on the carpet. 
So the carpet, the design on the carpet, the pattern, exactly, exactly suits launch the pad, yeah. picture from above of the Apollo launch pad. So you've got, the, it's like a road going up and then like yeah. a hexagonal shape at the top. He's pushing his cars along this as if it's actually a road. Mm-hmm. So you've not just got the pattern, you've got him simulating a car, yeah. going along there, around the launch pad. Right, so then you might say, where's the rocket? Danny's the rocket. So you might say, where's the rocket? On Danny Torrance's jumper, <laughs> an Apollo rocket on his jumper. He is sat on the launch pad and he sits up and rises up. Yeah. Well, right. I'm not so saying... So is that all I'm a saying, coincidence? No, I'm, I, I believe that that was all in Kubrick's mind to shoot that because, obviously, 1980, the Cold War still going on when The Shining came out. There would have been rumours, especially after Barry Lyndon, of this conspiracy theory. There was, he didn't do a film in between Barry Lyndon and Shining, did he? So Clockwork um, Orange was the early 70s. Yeah. Full Metal Jacket was late 80s. So The Shining would have been used as a tool to poke fun at conspiracy theorists. Like You've got a ton of stuff like that. Um, 237 and all the... It says room number on it and the only word you can spell is moon and room and yeah, well, moron yes. as well so you've got that I think it is deliberate on Stanley Kubrick's part because everything that he ever put in a frame was on purpose so you've got a handful of stuff in the shine so Native American symbols yeah there's the many gold other room, themes, the gold reserve well that could be linked into this as well not into the moon landings well it could be, because if you really think about the whole situation you've got Stanley Kubrick a man who is trapped to the point of insanity trying to get this out and what have you got in The Shining a man trapped in a construct right. around the gold room where he's going into parties with the most highest societies in the country linked to the gold reserve you know it doesn't really get any bigger than that yeah I, well I mean maybe not now because countries economies are fucked but back in the day when the things was actually yeah. linked to the gold reserve of the country I, I get that, but I don't think Jack Nicholson is portraying Stanley Kubrick in that. I just think he's portraying. I just think if you think about The Shining and even Eyes Wide Shut, you've got a man who. Oh, you're going to link it to his death as who's well. Who's trapped right? into a system? I just who's trapped and connected to these high societies that if he betrays or um, kind of goes back against them, then then the. The consequences will be dire. Has a mysterious heart attack. Well, I'm not saying I'm not going to be distasteful about a man's death, um, but I'm just saying the representation of the characters in the Shining and Eyes Wide Shut represent how Stanley Kubrick oh, yes, well, probably shows a film felt. about secret societies and yeah. a man so being caught got... up in a secret society. I just, I mean, that could be that could be an allegory for Stanley Kubrick, but not to do with the moon landings or supposed him filming the moon landings. But why would he feel indebted to such high societies then if he hadn't done something like film the movie? I don't know, maybe it's film about fame. He's got nothing to owe them apart from from that. What about, you can take this back to Clockwork Orange where he suddenly became, well, he's living in London. Uh, Probably to well, escape. He's, been he's r- reclusive, especially after Clockwork Orange where he self-censored it in, it only in Britain he got banned because yeah. he was, he thought it was making people kill it. Other well, people. there was a lot of bad press in the UK. So maybe it's a f- eyes wide shut. Isn't about him meeting up with secret societies in terms of the moon landings. Maybe it's a secret societies about being fit, just being famous and having to be reclusive because he's getting all this bad press. And you know, I mean, if you look at the first two minutes of the documentary, is it a life in pictures? He's yeah. pretty much all the. It's just clippings of articles and calling him reclusive and like, you know it's I don't think it's to I just do... feel like you could be a director at Kubrick's level right. and not have to be so involved with such secret sites to the point where you need to feel like you need to express it through your own work you know I'm trapped yeah but he was the biggest director of the 70s especially with the shining way you've got a character who's signed up for a job and then it goes crazy that's Stanley Kubrick right. he's signed up to fill a moon landing job and slowly and slowly it eats away at him so it's had to get it out in his I, it's a very easy narrative to 
fall into it. I understand it, but it's still, I just don't buy it. It so all what fits together. About AI. Because you've got the motive there. America wants to beat Russia. What about AI? Does that tie into his moon landings? Well, that's technically, you know. Spielberg's oh, it's not a Spielberg well. film. It's not. It's a Stanley Kubrick. If it has still been alive, Stanley Kubrick produced Spielberg film, isn't it? So it's still a coup. He used storyboards from Kubrick's drawings in the mid nineties. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but maybe it doesn't tie in. I'm saying it doesn't tie in. I'm saying eyes wide shut and the shining. But you because we already got the shining and eyes wide shut. So you, the technology's there. Front screen projection. Look into it. You've got it there. Yeah, but right. And it was so, used on the main landing footage. You can analyse that, and it's the same technology in 2001. And then you've got these messages, especially in The Shining, which can't literally can't be denied. You can't deny. I'm not denying. What he's done there I'm not with denying. the room number I'm just, or setting Danny Terrence up in that scene, how he does. I mean, it's a, well, it's not an irrelevant scene because nothing's relevant, but the film would narrative would still progress without it. So. He's put that in there on purpose. I'm not, and it might no, be for a laugh. I'm saying he well, has, would, he's you doing it to poke fun. All right, then. So if he's, if he's saying, oh, yeah, look, I did it. So he's either done it and admitted it, or he's done it. Surely wouldn't. He's not done it, and he's joked about it. Either way, the consequences are dire. So I think he's done it because they so had to do it. And you don't have to joke, him. but you feel like you have to tell the truth. Ah, that's, what, what about a clockwork orange? Why haven't they put any clues in that? Because that was more. Uh, it was immediately after. It was immediately after. Yeah, but he doesn't care about the source novel. He's, you've seen that in. No, he didn't care about the shining source novel. But I'd, I'd argue. Fuck that. Stephen King. <laughs> it's it, no, he's he's stayed faithful to <laughs> the rest. Yeah, yeah, well, I've got another conspiracy theory for you. It's space related. Um, the Wow signal in nineteen seventy seven. Yeah, when the what they, um, what's the organization set it? They point the shit up to the space, up to the skies, and found this unusual signal. Sort of probably the biggest clue to life outside the earth. Mm. Um, that happened on the same day that Elvis Presley died. There you go. Yeah, they linked. Aurelian's sad about the king's death. Maybe the king arrived on a different planet. Yeah, it might have been Send from... Send a message back. Exactly, there you go. What's about... What did the message say? It's just... Well, so pretty much the transcript is like zeros and ones and shit. Yeah. And then it's like... I'm guessing that's based on noise and radiation and shit. And it goes to like seven, eight, nine, goes off the charts sort of thing, so... Maybe one day we'll decode it and it'll be like... Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> Viva Rock Vegas. No, we don't talk about Flintstone. <laughs> That's the sequel nobody asked for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Along with Drill Bit Taylor 2. So, yeah, I think I'm happy to put my point across there. Yeah? Yeah. 